Warning, this adventure is super dangerous. Everyone appearing in this video is a trained professional. We don't recommend doing this adventure unless you have the proper experience and equipment. Attempt this at your own risk. One of the most challenging trails that we have taken on to date is the Pride Rock to Pu'u Ohuli Huli Trail, more specifically the Southeast Ridge Route. We were doing this just a couple of months after taking on Nevada's Moaba Peak, which you can see by clicking in the upper corner, so we thought that we were pretty well prepared. Little did we know, this one was going to be even more difficult. After a beautiful drive over to the other side of the island, we arrived at the trailhead, which is located in a neighborhood, so please be respectful to the locals. The trailhead is located directly at the end of the street, and that's where we will be beginning our adventure. There are a couple of junctions along the course of this hike that you really need to watch out for, and the first one is about 30 steps into the hike. It's at this point that you'll be turning right and beginning a climb that will last pretty much the entire way up. We had started the hike at 10.30 in the morning, but trust me when I say that that was nowhere near enough time, and you'll see that in just a little bit. Even though there is no signage marking the trail, there are a bunch of ribbons tied to the trees, so be sure to watch out for those. And there are also some ropes to help you get through some of the trickier parts, but as we always say, try not to put your full body weight on them because we have no idea what condition they're in. Even though the stats might not sound too bad, trust me when I say that this hike is an absolute beast. It has an overall distance of 3.8 miles with an elevation gain of 2,152 feet. Over the course of the trail, you will be experiencing steep inclines, technical terrain, rope climbing, big drop-offs on both sides, and you'll be hiking on a trail that is super overgrown. Needless to say, this trail is for experienced hikers only. Something that's kind of interesting is that as you climb, it will almost seem like you're going through different ecosystems. At one point, you'll be going through this pine tree forest. Be careful because those needles are slippery, especially on these steep hills. Even though it may not help with these slippery pine needles, Shoe choice is extremely important if you plan on taking on this hike. The margin of error is pretty much zero on a couple of the sections that we have coming up, and slipping could be extremely catastrophic. Another recommendation that we have is, at a minimum, downloading the track off of all trails. But you really should have a tracker on you like the Garmin InReach just in case you get into trouble. At this point, you're not so much hiking anymore as much as you are doing some sort of a mix of hiking and climbing. The lower portion of the trail is a little bit more popular because I think people just hike up to Pride Rock and back. So it's not too overgrown at this point, but it's going to get a whole lot worse in a little bit. As we clawed our way up towards Pride Rock, we came to the first significant technical section. At first, we only saw the blue rope on the right that looked pretty sketchy. But as we wrapped around the corner, we saw this white rope that looked like a much safer way up. After climbing this last tricky section, you will be at Pride Rock. V had a really good shot of Pride Rock on her GoPro. The only problem was it was destroyed by salt water the day after. If the climb up to this point has been sketchy for you, you should definitely turn back because things are about to get a whole lot worse. At this stage, the trail is going to be very overgrown and extremely narrow at the same time, which are not two things that typically work well together. On the bright side, off to your right, you're going to start to get really fantastic views of Kualoa Ranch, as well as picturesque views down the coastline. You can almost see all the way to the Crouching Lion Trail, which if you haven't seen our video about that one, you can see it by clicking in the upper corner. 
That hike is super fun and it might be a good option for you if walking along cliff sides like this makes you uncomfortable. As you make your way along the edge, you really need to watch your step. You will be encountering rocks and roots and this is a really bad place to trip. And that's especially true for the section that we have coming up next. Because before you know it, the left side of the trail will fall away and you'll have massive drops on both sides. You will be getting a small break from climbing though as the narrow ledge descends sharply. The good thing is that a lot of the rock that you'll find here is lava rock, so it is extremely grippy. And that's extremely comforting when traversing sections like this. As we made our way along, we spotted what appeared to be another technical climb. But thankfully, On noticed a small tree on the left side of the trail that had a ribbon tied around it, so we went that way instead. Even though Oahu is a tropical paradise, you may want to consider wearing a long sleeve shirt and pants if you attempt this hike. With all of the overgrowth, there is no shortage of sticks and other pokey things that'll scratch and cut you up along the way. A hat might also be a good idea to protect your face just in case you get whipped by a branch from the person in front of you. We were super grateful for a couple of sections like this that give you a little bit of a breather in between intense sections. Most of them were short and they spit you right back into the action, but this one here lasted for quite a while. Even though we are doing this trail as an out and back, the other version of this hike is about six miles long and you'll be hiking up the same way that we are in the video. But once you reach the top, you will continue on to the Northwest Ridge. From our research, doing the hike this way is better and safer as well. But one thing that you need to keep in mind is that you will need a shuttle to get back to your car. But in all honesty, I probably would not do the out and back version of this trail again. It was just too sketchy. The overgrowth has now ramped up to a whole new level. Taller hikers are probably going to struggle at this point. I'm not all that tall, but I can't tell you how many times I hit my head on branches along the way. As much of a pain as it was navigating our way through all of the twists and turns of this part of the trail, it was also kind of cool. The fact that this section of trail doesn't get a lot of foot traffic made it feel really natural and untouched. There were certain sections where you were in dense forests and there were vines on both sides and it felt like you were on some sort of rainforest expedition searching for an ancient temple. It is absolutely critical at this point that you really watch your step. You can barely see your feet in the dense vegetation and it was a little bit concerning knowing that the edge was not too far from where you were stepping. Even though the views off to the right of Kualoa Ranch are really nice, and that place is so pretty that they decided to film Jurassic Park there, the views on the left side of the trail showcase a pristine, untouched paradise. I was almost regretting all of the shave ice that I had eaten on this trip because there were some pretty small gaps that we had to squeeze through. Notice that I said almost because I'll never regret eating shave ice. The next section on the trail is this tall volcanic dike that you see ahead of us. It's another spot where you will have a sheer drop off just inches from where you're stepping. The only difference is this one is a lot higher than the last one. We were experiencing some pretty wild weather on this visit. There was a lot of rain and the trade winds were blowing pretty heavily. Thankfully, we didn't experience any rain on this hike and if it was raining, I would definitely not attempt it. We are now really deep in the vegetation. The trail has all but disappeared and finding the route would be extremely difficult if it wasn't for a couple of pink ribbons. This part of the hike has several rolling hills. You'll be climbing up just to drop back down and do it all over again. On the bright side though, one thing that this section is missing is those sheer drop-offs. 
They aren't gone forever though, and soon you'll be right back at them. But it won't be quite as sketchy this time around. After walking along the rim for just a second, you're going to be curving off to the left and dropping back down into the forest. Here you'll find a bunch of branches that look like they were custom made for you to walk through. Due to the extremely challenging terrain of this hike, you're not going to be going anywhere very fast. I would say that a headlight is pretty much a required piece of gear to take with you on this one. We weren't expecting it to take anywhere near as long as it did and we ended up being on the trail for almost 9 hours. This is also something that you should take into consideration when it comes to bringing water and snacks. All of the climbing and scrambling here will not only make you thirsty but it can build up quite an appetite as well. And you don't want to run out of energy up here because there's no quick way out of this one. Fun fact, the word pu'u in Hawaiian translates to hill or mountain. I couldn't find a translation for ohuli huli, but if there is one and you know it, please let us know in the comments below because I am curious. Even though this area wasn't super exposed or on perilous cliffs like some of the other sections, you are on a hillside that is off camber. This can make things really tricky because it seems like one minute you'll have tons of traction and you'll be totally fine and the next minute you'll be slipping and sliding all over the place. As we broke through to another beautiful view of the valley, we could hear the dinosaurs roaring as the tour buses rolled through. Fun fact, in addition to Jurassic Park being filmed at Koaloa Ranch, there was also a movie filmed there in 2021 called Finding Ohana. It's about two New York kids coming to the island to find treasure, although if they really wanted to put them to a challenge, they should have hit it up here. I will admit, there was something a little bit demoralizing about this trail. Every once in a while through the thick vegetation, we would get a small glimpse of the peak of Pu'u Ohuli Huli. It seemed like it was so close and we were almost there. But as we climbed up and over all of the rolling hills, it never seemed like it was getting any closer. If at this point in the video you are watching and saying that this looks beautiful but it's way above my comfort level, there's no shame in that. At a couple of points during this hike, it reached the top of our comfort level. But we have other Oahu hike videos that might be a little bit more your style. For instance, you should check out our video about Manoa Falls. You can see that one by clicking in the upper corner. After one more spicy little climb, On decided that it was time to bust out his Skydio S2 Plus to grab some aerial shots. Not only is this drone crazy because it flies autonomously, but it really did a fantastic job of driving home just how high these ridge lines are. Even though this hike has some incredibly sketchy moments, the scenery that you get from up here almost seems too good to be true. We were now towards the back of the canyon. The sound of the dinosaurs and all of the buses had faded away, and all we were left with was the sounds of jokes and laughter and the wind whipping through the lush green foliage. But all the joking around might have had to have been put on pause temporarily because the trail gets even harder. There are a couple of spots like this where you have to hold onto a tree and swing around the edge. The trail also got even more overgrown and we still had some of the hardest rock climbs ahead of us. There were also a couple more of these razor ridge sections as well. With the terrain becoming even more challenging, our forward progress was being slowed down even more. We were now late into the afternoon and we were already starting to talk about if we should head back now. But one thing that all three of us have in common is that we are incredibly stubborn when it comes to adventures and we really wanted to do our best to make it all the way to the top. 
even if it means climbing this section, which is probably one of the most terrifying climbs of the entire hike. Obviously, one of the main important factors in attempting adventures like this is knowing your limits. If you see this video and you're still crazy enough to want to attempt this, please be careful. We definitely don't want to see anyone get hurt, and we use these videos as a way of showing you what you're potentially getting yourself into. Just when you think that this trail can't get any slipperier and trickier to navigate, it says hold my Mai Tai and cranks it up yet another notch. It was at this point that we checked the time and realized that even if we turned back now, we were probably going to run out of daylight before we got back to the car. So against all of our stubbornness, we decided that this would be when we would turn back. And it's too bad because we were really close to the top. This red line is our track and you can see just how close to the summit we really were. On the bright side, when we got home we did some research and it turns out that once you get to the top, the vegetation is really dense and you don't get a view from up there anyways. As with most hikes, this one feels way sketchier on the way down. I think that it's at least partially due to the fact that you have to look down to see where your feet go, and in some spots that view stretches all the way down to the valley floor. We aren't exactly sure how much more time it would have taken to go up over the top and do the A to B version of this hike, but it would have been time well spent because let me tell you, some of these down climbs were intense. This is definitely one of those cases where the camera just doesn't do it justice. Even though we were a couple thousand feet off the valley floor, it felt like a whole lot more. We were now in a bit of a race against the clock. It was inevitable that we would be caught in the dark at this point, but we at least wanted to get through the sketchy section while there was still daylight. Some of these down climbs had sloped tops with loose topsoil on them. This took the sketchiness level up a couple hundred percent, and I'm really wishing that we would have brought some cannoneering rope to tie off on a tree to help us get down. One funny thing about this hike is that it wasn't until we got home and did a little bit of a deeper dive into the information, we found out that this is supposed to be the most dangerous hike on the island of Oahu, and I believe it. Compared to this one, hikes like Three Peaks definitely seem a little bit more on the mellow side. That being said, don't get complacent because hikes like Three Peaks can still be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. With all the rolling hills and low hanging trees, this hike feels almost as strenuous on the way down as it did on the way up. A lot of times you'll get a reprieve on the way back, but that is not the case on this one. Even though we were in a pretty big rush, we couldn't help but get the drone out one more time for a couple more of those sheer cliffs. This really is the best way to show just how exposed this section of the trail is. After we safely got off the ridgeline, the trail once again dove into an overgrown forest. For some reason, it seems like when you're on the way back, it's much easier to go off trail. We ended up going the wrong direction at a fork, and that sent us traversing along this sheer wall. The good thing is that we didn't get too far in before we realized that we had gone the wrong way and we turned around and headed back. Since we are up on a ridge line, even looking at the tracks can be a little bit deceiving. When you looked at the track, it looked like we were going the right way, but it was actually about 6 feet over and on top of that wall. We were now back on the right trail and making our way towards the exit. Much like the way up, the way out is really slow and it's deceiving because it looks like it's a lot closer than it is. For a moment, we even had some hope that we would finish with some daylight left. <laughs> the 
One good thing about being here so late in the day though was that the entire area was bathed in warm sunset light. It took an already beautiful area and made it that much more amazing. We had now made it back to one of the pine tree sections. And if you thought those needles were slippery on the way up, they are way more slippery on the way back down. We were really lucky that all three of us left this trail with nothing more than a couple of scrapes and bruises because this trail really will take a toll on you. It seemed like this trail wasn't quite ready to let us go just yet. As we made our way down towards the bottom, it started sprinkling just a little bit. The good thing is that we were past the trickiest parts of the trail, and it was just one of those Hawaiian rain showers that move through the area and they're gone before you know it. I remember the way back feeling like it was taking forever. Usually the way back on hikes feels way shorter, but for some reason this one was a little bit different. The landscapes looked different from this direction for some reason, and it was kind of hard to gauge how far we still had to go. As we made our way down the last technical climb, the sun sunk over the horizon and it was officially dark. Thankfully, we had learned from our experience in Rattlesnake Canyon, which you can see that video in the upper corner, to always be prepared with a headlight. And if you happen to be interested in finding out what type of gear we use, you can find V's Zebra Light and all sorts of other adventurous items over on our recommended gear page on our website. Finally, as we rounded one more corner, we saw the car and this wild adventure had come to an end. It's an adventure that we are sure to never forget, and it's yet to be seen if we're going to attempt it again. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because that really helps out the channel. If you have recommendations for future videos, let us know in the comments below. And for all the information about this hike and other awesome Oahu adventures, head on over to livethatadventure.com.